Okay, there's there's that function. Did you expect it to look any different than that? When you have something that's x to the fourth, isn't it supposed to be all going up and down a whole bunch of times? Not necessarily, right? It depends on the terms. If you, It just depends on how the terms are. If you change some pluses to minuses, things like that, then maybe it would have a few more turns in it. That What you learned in grade 11 about how many turns it has, that's sort of the maximum number of turns it can have. If you graph this other function, 3x to the fourth, 3x power of 4, or 3x, x, x, x. <laughs> it is going to look, and actually I'm going to make it a different, we'll change the line style here to a thick line so you know for sure it's different. That's the other function. It's obviously different, right? The y-intercept of that one is 0. The y-intercept of the first one is 6. They're different. Now I would like you to zoom out on the thing. Or actually, let's just, first of all, let's change the y scale so that we see more of it. So I'm going to go up to, instead of 20 here, I'm going to compress it to, maybe we'll uh, make it go up to 200 or something like that. Kind of zoom out on it a bit. 200. I don't know. The scale doesn't matter. I'm going to put some negatives in here. 50. Okay, so I've increased the Y values that it's showing. Okay, there's the first one, right? There's the second one. They still look different, right? Do they look as different as they did on the previous screen? No, no right? If I And I haven't even changed the, the X values yet, right? Because this... These become such big values. If I do 2,000 now, okay, going up to 2,000. That's the first one. You can just barely tell it's above the axis there. There's the other one. They're starting to look more and more the same, right? So let's uh, skip ahead here a little bit. In, I haven't even changed the X values, right? I'm going to go out to larger X values, like what would be larger than 4.7? 47? How about 47? Because then it stays nice whole numbers. Not that we're even using that. but So we're going 10 times as much here. And now we're going to have to go quite a bit higher on this to see the top of the graph. I'm going to put an extra couple de uh, zeros on there. Would be my guess. Probably not even enough. So I'm going up to 200,000 here. And the scale is 50,000. What are we going to see on the graph? Here's the first one. And 200,000 one is even nearly enough. And there's the other one. Do they look different? They look, they look almost identical now, right? And actually, since this goes up so steep at the on each side here, probably what we should do is go even higher than this. A couple million, two million, 20 million. There's no significance to the fact that I picked two there instead of some other number. But Okay. Doesn't this technology seem old now, these calculators? You have to go back and you can't touch the screen and just... Actually, if you have an iPhone you, or iPod Touch, you can uh, download an app for 99 cents that graphs far better than this anyways. Okay, so here's the first function. You can't even tell that the y-intercept is anything other than zero, right? When you look far away and you have, and I've only gone up to 47 on the left and the right, 47, right? If I trace here, in the center, how different are they? One is six and one is zero. You can't see the difference, but when we were zoomed in, remember that was quite a bit of difference. If I go to uh, if I go to x is one, how different are they? One is five, one is three, right? One's almost twice as big as the other. Okay, think of don't think about how how much different they are in terms of numbers. Think about how different they are in terms of like one percent of the other one, right? One's five, one's three, almost twice as big. One's 48 here. When I go to 2, one's 48 and one's 40. Relative to each other, it's not twice as big anymore, right? You go out a few more here, let's say to 10. 
One's 28,000. One's 30,000. What's happening with the numbers the farther away you go here? Let's go to... Yeah, like relative to each other, they're getting closer and closer together, right? When you go up to 20, one's 46,500. Or sorry, 465,000. One's 480,000. I know that if it, I know that that seems like a big difference, right? Fifteen thousand, but relative to the size of the numbers, it's not, right? Fifteen thousand out of four hundred thousand is not very much. If you were to go way out here like this, how how different are they? Now now the first digit is identical, and the second digit is getting pretty close. Okay, so if we keep going here a little bit, it's going to go off the screen, but the numbers get pretty big pretty quickly. Uh, I'm at 60 here. Now we're into the third digit that they're different. So they both start with, you know, 3-8. They're getting relative to each other closer and closer together. If you if you extend this principle here, if we go out to hundreds and thousands and hundreds of thousands, what's going to start to happen here? Should we test the limits of this calculator? Well, at some point, the, at some point the y value is going to be so big that it won't even... Register. So let, we could try a thousand here, but I'm guessing that's no, that might work. Well, actually, no. Go to a hundred. I guess we don't need the negative side. This is going to have to be quite a bit bigger now, right? I'll put four more zeros on it. Except it's hard to even see how many zeros you have there. I mean, the graph's not going to look any different because uh, that's no good. Yeah, we, we well, <laughs> so I obviously guessed wrong on the how many zeros to put on there. So what did I do? I went up too far, so it looks flat. So I got to take, I probably put either too many zeros or let's delete one of those. Try one more time and then I'll give up. Actually, what I'm going to do, I mean, well, you could try one more time here if you want. You can play around with yours while I'm... Okay, have a look at these two functions here. Those are the two functions. If, I, if I'm to zoom out on this... Okay, if we zoom out on this, what starts to happen with those two things? Now, actually, I guess we could change the scale here so that we don't have to look at all those million tick marks there. Force it to... Okay, can we watch this, please? Uh, if we compress this down here. As I'm compressing it down, what's happening relative to the, the whole function, the differences between those two functions... You know, if we if we put the scale down there, going up to 10,000 there, you can't even see the difference between them anymore, right? The farther I go here, the more... See, this is how those calculators should operate now. You should just be able to drag the screens and all that. This is only going out to 10 each way here, right? So if I do this and I compress this and then I do this, you can't even tell the difference between them anymore, right? One function models the other for large values. The, the y-intercept at the beginning is totally insignificant. The, any of the values of even the smallest terms are insignificant. The only, they look identical, right? And so I chose those functions because they have the same first term. Once you get to really large values, the first term is the only thing that matters. The other terms are pretty insignificant. Let me put these in different terms that you're going to understand, namely money, okay? If you want to think of it in terms of money, think think if, uh, if you substitute numbers in here, let's start with a simple number to put in. If you substituted in 1 into there, if you put a 1 in there, what would you have? You'd have 3 times 1 squared, right? You'd have 3 plus 2 times 1 to the third plus... 3 minus 5 plus 6, right? Relative to each other, are any of these more significant than the others? Or do they all kind of matter at this point? 
when x is 1, when x is 1, they all matter, right? And the same over here. 3 times... 3 times 1 squared, this one is 3, right? If I make x 10 here, x is 10, what does that do to those terms? Well, the one that's x to the fourth, what does that term become now? 30,000, right? So if this, was, if this was money, these all matter, right? Let's write out these ones first. This one would be 2,000, this one would be 300, and this one would be 50, and this one would be 6. I think, it, and this would be 30,000, the simpler function, right? I think if you think of it in terms of money, you'll, you'll see what's, what's happening here. These are all significant compared to each other. If it's money and you start with $3, but then you lose $2, that's a big chunk. Losing $2, $2 is significant to $3, right? It's almost, it's two thirds of it. Then you get $3, you lose $5, you get six, they're all significant. If you have this, is 2,000 is 2,000 the same significance to 30,000 as 2 is to 3? No, right? It's a lot less. This this is a lot less. 6 is totally insignificant compared to $30,000, right? 6 is nothing. You can afford to give away $6 if you have 30,000. Far more easily than you can afford to give away $6 if all you have is those ones added up. If you continue the process, this first term just continues to dominate because it's when you raise numbers to higher and higher powers, it gets bigger and bigger, and all of these get to be insignificant, so it looks the same as the other one.